Welcome back, all you minties. Today, we're going to help Poppy with his top 10 list. That's right. Today, I'm doing a list of my top, well, I guess our top, because you do, you two are helping me, yeah. our top 10 favorite father stories in graphic novels. So, join us. Welcome back, all you minties. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And ring that bell for notifications. Bingo. Both of you are really good at that. I didn't even have to tell you that time. All right. So, a uh, big shout out, by the way, before we get started, to my wonderful wife for getting me this cool shirt. It's I'm a, I am approved now by the comics code. And but there's, there's a higher code. And that's my family code that I need to be approved by. Well, you are. are. I'm a, you already are am. Approved. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So, today I wanted to do something different. You all know I like to make my top 10 list mm -hmm. of graphic novels. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to just say top 10 best fathers in comics, because that's pretty easy that could go uncle ben pa kent uh you know and and that's just in general where i could it could have been fun and done the worst fathers in comics like goku or omni man or how's death go deathstroke or norman how's, osborn who, how's goku a bad father i mean he's a cool dad but he takes off to go fight anyway so instead i wanted to talk about um, relationships with uh, fathers in comics and focus on one book and it was hard because I wanted to talk about things like Saga but without spoiling things I couldn't bring Saga up because well if you haven't read it I, um, so there won't be any talk of spoilers I will be showing off the artwork and my two wonderful daughters are here to help me with uh, you all got a choice each which changed my mind to put them on Yay. here because I know how important it is to both of you so Let's go ahead and get started. Kicking off this list for me is Superman by Peter Tomasi and Patrick Gleason. And there are trade paperbacks available of these stories in here. This is the Omnibus and there's also the uh, Deluxe Editions, the Rebirth Deluxe Editions. Now, I just did an overview of this, but maybe it's fresh in my head and that's why I added it on the list. But I can't think of a better Superman story that focuses on being a father and what it's like to be a father uh sure i mentioned jonathan kent at the beginning pa kent you know and the just the morals that he taught his son so that you see clark pass on to john his own son and it's really cool to see the family come full circle and that's exactly what this is about it's about family yes there's plenty of adventures yes there's plenty of fights between john and damien but the basis and the core of this story is about family and Superman. For once, you get to see him play the father role. And there's a lot of people that, a lot of my viewers that did not like Superman until he was shown as a father. And I think it's very important. And that's why I decided to showcase this particular book and add it to the list. Next up on the list is Yotsuba by Kiyohiko Azuma. And this book has been published, or this series has been published several times here in America by ADV. Uh, eventually, it was uh, Kanansha. And this is the same gentleman that worked on Azumanga Dayo. And what makes this worthy of being on this list, Lydia? Well, first off, let's start with the story. Okay, what's it about? Basically, of course, the manga is named after the little green-haired girl in the front. Mm -hmm. And obviously, her name is Yotsuba. Okay. Um, she's pretty interesting, like... She's very, very social. Like, she just goes around sometimes, mm -hmm. like, without telling her dad. She just kind of leaves. And she appears to be, like, you know, pretty young. Okay. And the premise of the story is that Yotsuba and her dad, Yosuke, mm -hmm. uh, they move to a new city, so obviously there's going to be new people that they meet there. And Yotsuba, being herself, uh, it easily makes new friends and just has fun with people. So the relationship is between father and daughter, mm -hmm. which is pretty interesting because this list was a little hard because most of the relationships that I see in comics between fathers and daughters are in manga or in manhwa, uh, you know, besides Commissioner Gordon and, and Batgirl and things like that. But it, where's the mom in this? Well, kind of spoils, not really. I think uh, it's important. You can say. Yeah. Uh, well, Yotsuba was found by Yosusuke, mm -hmm. like a... Uh, in another country uh -huh. like when he was visiting another country that's not Japan since that's where they live and she is an orphan so he just decided to adopt her since she just kind of stayed with him it is a it, it's a funny slice of life I think it's for all ages 
type of story. I'm not sure if there's an anime of, or not of this particular series, but it's definitely on the list because it's one of those books that's family friendly. Yeah. So like, there's no fights. It's not like, oh wow, the somebody dies. It's just like a feel good manga, and oh. I especially like the relationship between Yosuke and uh, her his daughter mm -hmm. because like you know. He's, like, very friendly towards her, like, and he knows, like, when to punish her if she's being bad, but, you know, they're still friendly towards each other, and they have fun together a lot, and, you know, just, it's pretty cute. It kind of reminds me of my relationship with you. Yeah, yes! Win for Poppy. Thank you. God Country by Donny Cates and Jeff Shaw. Now, you may have seen this book on my list before. I've done lots of lists here on the channel, but... It belongs here. It's a beautiful story. Now, this does have mature content, so keep that in mind. Uh, it is the story of Emmett Quinlan and how he's just losing his mind. He's not the man he used to be. He suffers from dementia, and he just has violent outbursts. He goes off on his family, mainly his son and his daughter-in-law and his granddaughter. And it's just a sad story about who this man used to be. And all this takes place in West Texas. Well, one day, a magical sword shows up, and Emmett picks up the sword, and he remembers everything. He remembers the man that he used to be, and it's beautiful. There are moments in here that will just sum up your relationship with your father, or sum up your relationship with your kids, how much you wish you, wish you could show them how much you love them, and it's a beautiful book, so prepare for some crying, because it's also a sad book. Uh, there are some amazing action sequences in here by Shaw, and because, I mean, when we're talking about a magical sword, you know there's going to be some villains that are coming after this sword. And But the thing to keep in mind is that when Emmett picks up the sword, he was the man he used to be, and when he puts it down, he's back to being, you know, this old, angry man that can't remember anything. Alicia, what is next on our list? A uh, dog man. Dog man. Now, this is, uh, who wrote this? Uh, Dav Pilkey, Dave Pilkey, I don't know. Wow, you, you pronounce names just like your father. Good <laughs> job. It's a legacy we pass on. So, this is a pretty interesting comic graphic novel. It is one of the biggest selling graphic novels of all time. Um, and it's characters from, correct me if I'm wrong, the characters debuted in Captain Underpants, right? Uh, the characters from Captain Underpants write and draw the comic? Is that how it goes? Yeah. Okay. So, is it Dogman? Why is Dogman on this list? What, what, what about Dogman is it that makes it a good father, uh, like a good story featuring a father in a graphic novel? Well, it's, it's because um, there's two characters in it. It's Petey and Lil Petey. Mm -hmm. but, and who are they? Uh, like... Uh, Petey cloned himself, mm -hmm. but he tried to clone himself, but he turned out to be Lil Petey because it wasn't actually, uh, it was supposed to be, like, a younger version of himself, but he didn't know that. Okay. So, then he, like, tried to sell him because he didn't want him. He but, tried to sell the kid? Yeah. This is a good father? And then, and then Dogman adopted him, oh. but then... Uh, uh, like, he, uh, PD, uh, got better, so he, like, and he took... Little him. Petey back? Yeah. Mm, okay. So those are the cat characters that are in here. Yeah. And what, what is it about them that you like? What, what is it? They're, they're funny? They're yelling at each other? What is it that you enjoy about them? It's funny. It's funny. Okay. So this is definitely in all ages. Young kids can read this. You started reading this at a very young age. And she, this is crazy, she outgrew Captain Underpants and she fell in love with Dog Man. So I actually read Captain Underpants. Captain Underpants when I was like uh, seven. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh I'm like, sorry. When she was seven. She I started, don't know. I so like that all led to Dog Man, and that's why it's on this list. This one is published by Scholastic News, so it will be at your next Scholastic Fair, or you can go on Amazon to, to buy a box set of these. The Wedding of Cyclops and Phoenix. So when I'm showing this book off, you know, you're probably thinking X-Men. You're probably thinking Cyclops. No, Cyclops is not a good dad. You might be thinking Wolverine. Uh, no, well, Wolverine, even though he is taking care of young girls, himself isn't the greatest dad, you know, looking at the Ken. Who I'm talking about in this particular volume and what sums up the relationship between father and kids 
is Professor Xavier. From the Thanksgiving dinner, when they all talk about the proposal and uh, Professor Xavier gives a beautiful speech, to the actual wedding issue 30, where Professor Xavier tying a bow tie is teaching a lesson to his children about responsibilities and always being there for them. And then the beautiful moment when, you know, Professor Xavier can't walk during this time. And I know that sounds silly when I say during this time, but if you read enough X-Men, you know that I'm what I mean. Um, he's in a wheelchair. He's bound to a wheelchair. And there are guests in there that don't know they're mutants. And Jean doesn't care. She wants to have a dance with the man that she calls father. And she uses her telekinesis to pick him up and they have a beautiful dance. And that sums up the relationship. Sure, yes, yes, yes. There's lots of people that have tried to... Uh, do this weird retcon with Professor X and uh, weird intentions with Jean. But when it comes down to it, it is a beautiful story. And I think nothing does it better than this particular album. It's also available in trade paperback format. Day Tripper by Gabriel Ba and Fabio Moon. Now, you've seen this on my list before as some my favorite Vertigo title. This is the Absolute Edition. And this is also mature content. And the basic premise of the book is about a man named Bras de Olivias Dominguez. And it's a unique look at his life. And I mean unique, and this is just a tiny spoiler, but not much one. I think this is the hook of the book. And that is that in each issue, because there's 10 issues collected in here, he dies at a different point in his life. Sometimes he's a little kid. Sometimes he's an old man. Uh, sometimes he's a middle-aged man. Now that is cool, because when you put all 10 issues together, you're able to sum up a man's life, his love, his lost, and what, to me, you don't really see it until you read the whole thing and you go back to it, is the relationship with his father. And those missing key elements that you don't see in life, that you wish you could see, the 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 moments in life that you wish you could take back, like, oh, I, sh I, I should have talked to them more. You know, it makes you appreciate life because once people are gone, they're gone. So that's why I added that this wonderful uh, book on another list of mine. Batman and Robin by Peter Tomasi and Patrick Gleason. Yes, I already said their names. This is an omnibus available in trade paperbacks, standard size hardcovers. Um, but I think to me, this is the best example of Batman being a phenomenal father. Of Alfred being a phenomenal father. I think this is what sums up everything and it's a beautiful relationship it shows you how good of a person bruce wayne is even though he himself grew up you know with uh an orphan well, an orphan but not really right like he had alfred and it shows how much he had alfred and how much alfred impacted his life but this is the story of also redemption because you have damian wayne so damian is the recent robin and he you know was Raised by the League of Assassins, he was taught to kill. He was taught to be a horrible person. And now he's redeeming himself. He's taken on the role of Robin. And he's reunited with his father, Bruce Wayne. So all this takes place after Grant Morrison's run on Batman and Robin. Now, I will say this is the only book that you might have to read another book to to, to, to truly see what's going on. And that is Batman. Um, it's collected in the Batman by Grant Morrison, Omnibus Volume 3. Because something important, and I mean really important, happens in the lives of Bruce Wayne and Damian Wayne in the pages of Batman Incorporated. I don't want to spoil that, but the outcome of that are shown in these pages. And it's it's heartbreaking. And so I will warn you ahead of time. I mean... the it, there are moments in here you're going to be tearing up and but it's a beautiful story it's about a father and his son and how his son doesn't really want to listen so if you know if you've had that kind of relationship with your father and you've been a rebel or you have a kid that's like that doesn't want to listen to, i think this is a perfect example of what that relationship can be so mouse by art spiegelman was also on my list of standalone graphic novels but has to make it on this list um because I don't like to warn people that this is, I mean, it's not mature content. It is a heavy subject when you're talking about the Holocaust, but I think it's such an important read that anybody could read it. So that's, you know, it, but just keep that in mind, though. I mean, we're talking about actual events that happen. And granted, they're done with uh, mice and cats and, and pigs and dogs. But these were real people and these things really happened to them. So... That's the premise of the story. It's about Art finding um, his father, Vladek, um, who talking to him about what happened in the Holocaust and his mother and their relationship. But the most important part of the story was Art's relationship with his father, like getting to know his father, 
getting to know why he became the man that he was. There's some things that Art doesn't agree that his father does. Even though he's a survivor of the Holocaust, he does things that you wouldn't think a man that has gone through something so horrible would be doing. Um, there's also a language barrier because he, uh, uh, Vladek, his father, speaks broken English. And it reminds me a lot of my dad, like the way I would... I would deal with my dad in public because of his broken English and he gets frustrated with people that don't understand him. So it's a beautiful story. It's probably the most important comic or graphic novel that I, I do have on this list and one that I think everybody should have on their library. But I think this showcases the relationship that doesn't always have to be perfect with your father. So that's why I included it on the list. Lone Wolf and Cub by Kazuo Koike and Goseki Kojima. Of course it made it on the list. Um, it's in my top 20 favorite manga of all time. And you'll probably see it in other lists too. But it's freaking awesome. There's 28 of this Tonkaban little stories uh, to tell the entire tale. There's also omnibus editions which are thicker. But once you read this you'll be hooked. I mean this is the basis of a lot of characters. And to an extent characters like Wolverine. So it is the story of Ogami Ito and how his family is just massacred. So this is definitely mature content. I, I think I need to state that. And he is left with just his one child, Daigoro. So there comes a point in his life where uh, Ogami gives the child a choice. He puts a ball and a sword down. And if the child chooses the ball, he will live a peaceful life. If the child crawls over to the sword, he will live the life of a ronin and avenge his family help his father avenge his family so it's it's a story of betrayal it's a story of uh just samurai this is during the uh tokugawa uh, period of japan but the, the the crux of the story the the main point of all of this is the relationship between ogami and daigoro and yes there's a bunch of amazing samurai around but their relationship is what keeps you reading you want to keep how uh he keeps how ogami keeps the child safe and what happens when the kid starts growing up does he want to follow in his father's footsteps do yourself a favor and read this i really hope one day we get deluxe editions of these so everybody can find how wonderful the story is but there's a reason why this is an epic saga and why it's on the list and yes because it features an amazing father and to wrap up the list, Starman by James Robinson and Tony Harris and others. So, of course, this made it on the list because, as I mentioned during Mouse, not every relationship with a, with fathers is perfect. There's broken relationships. Um, there are relationships that are just about business and legacy. And that's what this is about. It's about the family, business, and legacy. And it's a beautiful story. To me, it's one of the most perfect comics. So... The premise of this is all about Ted Knight, who used to be the Golden Age Starman, a superhero. And one day, he decides to pass that legacy on to his son, David. And this isn't much of a spoiler, but this because this kicks off the whole series. But David ends up getting killed um, in the it, it, like his first night out. So his brother, Jack, comes back to Opal City to help his dad out. And eventually, even though he doesn't want to takes on the role of Starman. He fights that legacy. He fights the family business. He doesn't. He's a collector, so that's another cool thing about it. And his relationship with his father isn't the best until you start reading it and you start seeing the relationship just get better and better, almost like it's healing throughout the book. And it, it probably says a lot about Robinson and his relationship with his father. I love this book and I think it's perfect. You know, there are things in life that we don't want to do uh, because our old man wants us to. And then in the end, when you look back, you're, you're like, oh man, he was doing that to look out for me. And I think that this, I can't even talk about this ending of this particular book um, without shedding a tear. So I'm not even going to go there, but it is a beautiful story. Uh, it will be available in compendium format uh, this coming year. So if you're interested in purchasing, um, do it that way. Uh, because the, well, the omnibus was canceled and these books are long out of print. But the compendium, there's only going to be two of them. It's a great way to collect it. But... 
If you're interested in any of these books, don't forget to check out our sponsor. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online source for collected editions up to 50% off. Retail price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on excellent packaging, so your stuff gets to you in excellent condition, and they have amazing customer service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And for all you Minties that are watching, if you're a first-time customer, don't forget to mention that Near Mint Condition sent you their way for a promotional credit on free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S. customers. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your source for the hottest books with deep discounts, customer service, and excellent shipping that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the list of top 10 stories featuring fathers in graphic novels. Thank you so much to the Junior Mints for helping me with this video. I guess, uh, happy Father's Day to all you fathers, mm -hmm. or soon-to-be fathers. Uh, or happy Father's Day to the happy Father's Day to the happy <laughs> Father's Day. Never gets old. Never. It's always an adventure here. Seriously, everybody have a wonderful day and stay healthy, stay safe, and what does mommy always say? Stay minty. And also much love, because that's what you say. <laughs> that's what I say. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.